I've brought this plant along today because I want to show you something very, very interesting. One of these leaves fell off into the ground and it made roots. I've brought another one to show you how, what the roots look like at the early stage. It makes roots. The leaf goes into the ground and it makes roots. But look what this leaf has done. It has grown, it's got roots, and on this side, look there, a little pl plant is actually growing out of the leaf. Now, how does this happen? How can a plant just do that? There are no sperm cells, there are no egg cells. It's just making a new plant from a leaf. Well, that's all due to mitosis. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you all about mitosis and how it works. But let's first look exactly what is mitosis. Look on the screen and you'll see there. The first thing is that mitosis is a type of cell division where one cell becomes two. And that's part of the clue. It's when somatic cells, and now somatic is just a fancy word for body cells. So whether it's a body of a plant or the body of a human being or, or an animal, it's, they are called somatic cells. And then the very important thing about somatic cells is that you want the chromosome number in the, cro the chromosomes in that, those cells of that individual organism, they must be kept constant. So humans have 46 chromosomes and you want 46 chromosomes as our bodies um, do different things and the cells divide and cell division takes place. Now let me just tell you first of all, why is mitosis actually important? I gave you a hint at the beginning, but one of them, and I'm sure you've experienced this, mitosis helps with repair. When you, Sometimes when you cut yourself, you might get a paper cut or accidentally cut yourself with a knife, or you may even have an operation. All that repair of healing your body and getting it glued back together and the cells form, eventually the skin forms a scar, and that's all part of mitosis. Another one is asexual reproduction. That's what's happening here. It's asexual reproduction. There are no um, gametes involved, no sex cells involved, just the plant making more of itself. And the same chromosome number is maintained. And the last one is, look at those cute little puppies. They grow into adult dogs. You were once a baby and you've grown into a much bigger um, a teenager now. So the growth that takes place is also due to mitosis. But remember, the chromosome number is kept the same all the way. Before we can understand mitosis fully, you have to know about the cell cycle. And now I just want to tell you a bit about the cell cycle. The cell cycle is a series of um, events in a cell that happen over and over again in the life's, a lifetime of various cells. It takes about 25 hours and the main part at the bottom there, you see that purple blue color? That is interphase. It takes up most of the time. So maybe like 22, 23 hours of a cell's life, of this whole process of the cell cycle is interphase. And in that time, the cell grows, it performs its functions, depending on what type of cell it is, and DNA replication takes place. The DNA makes an exact copy of itself before the process of mitosis. And mitosis is one to two hours, and that is, like I said earlier, it's when cells divide. So you have one cell becoming two. At the start of mitosis, it's one cell, and then it becomes two by the end of mitosis. Here I've just put uh, on the screen, you'll see the one cell and the two cells. Now, let me explain this to you. The one cell we call the parent cell. And the other two cells we call the daughter cells. So any cells that are result after a division, it, or they are called daughter cells, and they come from the parent cell. Those red arrows between the parent cell and the daughter cells, that is mitosis. And we're going to look at those phases and the different stages that happen in that time. Now remember I told you about interphase. Interphase, that long process, where, well, 23 hours, let's say, where um, growth and um, rep DNA replication takes place and the cell is busy with all its little jobs that it has to do. That is an interphase. And if you look at the inside of that cell over here, you can see that the, the DNA looks like spaghetti. It's just like thin threads, chromatin network. And then 
On the right hand side, you can see there are two cells. So the one cell on the left became two cells on the right. And, we, and then between that, we've got mitosis, which consists of four phases. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And I'm going to now show you a nice way to remember those um, phases and what happens in each phase. First of all, prophase. Prophase involves preparing. And you'll see the first letter of each word in blue matches the first letter of, the, of each phase. So the P is for prepare. That is where the cell gets ready. It's, it's like got a few little things that have to happen and get into place before we can carry on with the rest of mitosis. Then we have metaphase. And metaphase means you can think of middle. The cells, um, over in the cells, the chromosomes line up on the equator. And then you have anaphase, which I say A for away. And now you'll see why I say A for away when we get there. And then telophase it stands for two, because one cell becomes two by the end of mitosis. I just want to remind you as well about the structure of a chromosome. A chromosome consists of a chromatids and a centromere that holds them together. And we call them sister chromatids because that is just before um, a mitosis starts, but after DNA replication, where the, one chroma, um, the chromosome made a copy of itself, and so we call it sister chromatids. They've got exactly the same information. Okay, so now we're going to get stuck into, pro, uh, into prophase, which is the first phase of my, um, mitosis. And remember, it's all about preparing. So the first thing that happens, there, there are going to be four things I'm going to show you now. The first thing is that chromosomes become more visible. So that spaghetti network, sort of, you don't see that anymore, you see actual chromosomes. They be, the spaghetti network becomes shorter, the chromatin network, the, all of them, uh, the threads become shorter and fatter, and then they are visible as chromosomes. The other thing is the nuclear membrane disappears. Now, why do you think that happens? Think about it. Inside the nuclear membrane, you've got the, um, the chromosomes, but they need to move around in the cell. They need to go wherever they have to be for this whole process to carry on. So this is also part of the preparation. You need them to escape, to get out of the nucleus. So the nuclear membrane that's holding them there has to disappear. Then we've got these special structures called centrioles. And centrioles have to, they also have to get into, permission, uh, into position and they move to the opposite ends of the cell. So they're going to be at opposite ends and we call those the poles of the cell, like the North Pole and South Pole of the Earth. They are the poles of the cell. They move there. And then those little lines coming out from the, it looks almost like spider legs. Those are spindle fibers, or, or some people call them spindle threads. They are um, beginning to form because they play a very important role in moving the chromosomes around. So we want to have these four things happen before we can get to the next phase. And what is the me next phase? Metaphase. Metaphase means middle, or, or think of middle when you think of metaphase. If you look over there, you can see that the chromosomes are lined up in a row like that at the equator of the cell. Rather don't say uh, middle of the cell because that's not quite true. It's more the equator of the cell. And the other thing is, that the chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers. They must attach to the spindle fibers because you want them to be pulled. They get positioned there, and then the spindle fibers are going to do something really cute. Look here at the next phase. Anaphase is A for away, remember? So now you have the spindle fibers, they are pulling. Some of them are pulling up, and some of them are pulling that way, and they're pulling in opposite directions. And what happens is those chromatids are now the centromere splits and the one chromatid go the one lot of chromatids go to the one end and the other lot of chromatids go to the other end. There you are, I've put it up there. So it's the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles after the centromere splits. So now we're going to look at telophase and remember the clue there is two because two cells are made. The first thing is what happens now is that the opposite of what happened in prophase happens. So remember in prophase, the nuclear membrane disappeared because you want the chromosomes to get out and be all over in the cytoplasm. But now 
we want to do the reverse of that. So the first thing that is the reverse of that is that the nuclear membranes are going, are going to form around the, chrom um, the, the chromosomes and keep them in where they're supposed to be, in a nucleus. The second thing is that the spindle fibers break down. They formed in prophase 1, but now they are breaking down. We don't need them anymore. We've, they, they've done their job. And the other one is a very important um, word that you must learn. It's like a terminology word, cytokinesis. Cyto refers to cytoplasm, kinesis to splitting. So it's the splitting of the cytoplasm. So it's almost like two balls of clay and then they, you pinch them in the middle. It gets narrower and narrower and eventually it looks like the right hand side of the screen where there are two cells. And the chromatids are known as chromosomes and eventually they, at the end of telophase they form a chromatin network again. They become those long threads. So you can't see them as chromosomes anymore. Very, very important point at the bottom of the screen. It says chromosomes in each daughter cell are identical to the parent cell. You want them to be identical. You don't want your skin suddenly to become dog hair or something weird like that. It must be identical. And you don't want... This plant to look any different, it must look the same. You want the um, chromosome number to stay the same. And that is the end of the video. And I hope it's helped you. If you get stuck with mitosis, watch it again and see if you can, um, uh, almost before I say it, that you can actually say the steps because you need to be able to identify the different um, stages from the diagrams and you need to be, explain what is happening in the diagrams. And learn that order. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, four phases.